was the month of December, and all through your phones, a disturbance of alerts, rings, buzzes, and tones. A story has arrived, nestled deep in your pocket, unannounced, unbidden, such a gift to unlock it. It, it begins, begins today, today, and on for 23, 23 days, days more. Pay heed to this feed, for an epic, epic obscure. obscure. A Christmas calamity, insanity, we hope to never endure. So rein in your reindeer as we approach the first door. Wistful white winter wood with a wreath wrapped all in bows. How fitting for the beginning to a song of sugar and snow. Austin, and this is, we'll figure it out, and you'll know when we figure it out. It's a new game, but it's going off of uh, the quiet year that we played for Patreon. I'm Austin. I already told you. Uh, I have the D&DB crew with me, and we'll get to them in a second, but I want to introduce Alex. Alpha Alex is what we're calling her for this game. Hi, Alpha Alex. I, 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 have, I have been called Alpha Alex everything that involves anonymous Alex, because there <laughs> needs to be some form of distinction. I'll be your DM this evening. Can I get you all a drink? Perhaps an appetizer? I got a water. Yeah, perfect. She, got, she already got me a water. Uh, I have some caramel bugles, if if that'll... <laughs> What's a Christmassy drink? Uh, eggnog. eggnog. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Duh. I was about to make it really complicated. Water. I'm like, well, there's this one cocktail called the Santa Sipper that's like got cranberry juice and a bunch of other stuff in it. It's got I'm like in. orange bitters. Like That's what we're drinking on the... On the finale of this, I think. Ooh. So I always make this that stuff that's called Kukovka, but I make it with, like, instead of around Christmas, I make it with cranberries and oranges and then spices. Ooh. I like mold mead. Yeah. Is mold mead a thing? Mold mead. Yeah. It, you can mull most things. It's yeah. whether or not most people <laughs> mull them. Dogs mull people sometimes. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, I put those spices in my body, then I am mulled. I, I just made line <laughs> eggnog. Especially the um, Homestead Creamery eggnog, just into Ooh. my veins directly. Um, what are we? What are we doing for intros? Hi, I'm Nate. So, that's, oh, that's Nate. So that, we're good. What else you want to know? You're in. Ew. No, you're good. Mostly like clearish yellow, I guess. No, no, <laughs> no. We're not doing that. It's Christmas. Well, Stop it. It's Euro. Christmas. Yeah, it is Christmas. I'm it's sorry. It's green and red. No. <laughs> Whoa. You need to see a doctor or a, a team of doctors. Jenna's a doctor. Hi, Jenna. I'm not. Oh. Oh, Alex. Uh, anonymous Alex is a doctor. Hi, Alex. Hi, uh, hey, Anonymous. Hey, I'm super not a doctor. Oh, me neither. All right. Take we it got away. We got that cleared up. Take it away, Alpha. Alpha Alex. All right, so because we are doing the continuation of the Christmas uh, quiet year that you guys gave me, which, again, I have some concerns about you guys. Uh, this got real dark real fast. Like, I'm sitting there like, okay, this makes sense. Yeah, pardon? Like, I was just, like, audibly, like, gasping while reading certain parts because I'm like, why is, th wh why is this a Quentin Tarantino production of, like, a Christmas film. Like, this was intense and insane. Uh, so I hope everybody's doing okay uh, and whatever darkness was in your minds has been expelled into this game of Quiet Year. Uh, but because of that, we are going to be having Christmas-themed characters. So we're going to start with uh, you, Anonymous Alex. Who did you make? I made... Hallie Red Deer, who is a reindeer that is Rudolph's like great niece. You, you know, deer don't really track these things super well, so she's somehow related to Rudolph, and she's just so excited to be going out to find him. To like, you know, she just has so many questions for him. She wants to follow in his hoof steps. All right, uh, Jenna, we're gonna pop to you. What did uh, what did you make for us? Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna be playing Spruce. He is a part elf, part 
Grimschling, part fairy penguin. Uh, basically, he's an experiment, uh, but mostly he's just here for the vibes, man. All right, loving it. Uh, Nate, let's go on to you. What did, what did you build for us? I have a, a full-on elf, an actual Krimbles elf named Johan Pockelbell. You may recognize the name. He had a brief stint several hundred years ago uh, where he played at being a professional musician slash composer. Uh, but now he's back in the North Pole avenging his... Avenging or looking for his lost friend, Frosty. All right. Which brings us around. Austin, I believe your character also has a Frostbitten connection. Yeah. Uh, I'm a Frosty boy that's Frost is Frosty's boy. Uh, I'm Jack Frost. <laughs> Frost as fuck, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also in search for Frosty, who I love very, very dearly. Paco Bell is going to help me find him. And yeah, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a cold boy with doing cold things. I'm a cold boy doing cold things like murder. Damn. All right. So we're going to open on a really grim sort of cold day. It's about four or five days until Christmas. The sky overhead is completely grayed out. The sun is barely making the clouds above glow. There is a wind that is carrying the snow across the fields, though it is not in and of itself snowing. This is not the kind of joyous winter that all of you have been accustomed to before. This is bleak. This is grim. And off in the horizon, there is some kind of dark, moving shape. Far away now, almost imperceptibly, getting closer and closer and closer. Again, it's far off on the horizon. Probably nothing to worry about. I'm certain that the ominous tone I delivered that in does not foreshadow anything spooky or ominous. Um, You know, the ominous tone that isn't implying ominousness. Yeah, that's how words work, right? All right, we are going to open uh, with Austin and Nate. You two, uh, your characters, Frosty and Pucklebell, are going to be standing in this frozen, I don't want to say wasteland, but everything around you is snowfield as far as the eye can see. There's nothingness. There are some disturbing mounds under the snow, but overall it's just field and snow and cold. All of you, as we open, are carrying the scars of everything that you have experienced thus far. Everything from the deaths of people near and dear to you, to the horrors of war, to horrible experience. Like, so much of the trauma that you all have endured is just burnt into your mind and sort of scarring you. But you still have the things that you cling to. And in this moment, for the two of you, it is the search for Frosty. Or more accurately, his hat. All right, where are we going, Paco? Well, I, I, I think last time we saw him, we, we, he was heading for the Rock Candy Mountains. Well, we've been traveling this way for I don't know how long. Um, we need to get there. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe if we've, we weren't stopping all the time for you, we could move faster. We need to make sure we search everywhere. Can't just leave spots unturned. Okay. Let's go, though. You're right. You head towards the Rock Candy Mountains, noticing, but attempting to ignore, that the Rock Candy Mountains, you are making you walk directly towards this ominous black shape that is on the horizon. You're able to sort of put it out of your mind for a moment. But as you head there, we are going to jump ahead, or uh, gallantly leap, as it would be, to a young deer who seems to also be searching the snowfields, yet in a different place and for a different purpose. Uh, Hallie, what are you doing right now? Galloping around joyously. There's, there's just, it's so wonderful to just be galloping around and stuff. Also searching, but like, you know, like just kind of looking, but like also galloping. You can look fast. That's fine. <laughs> She's speed running this search and rescue mission. <laughs> yes. All right, perfect. You are going to not really notice much as you gallivant around these snowfields, 
but the doom and the gloom that's sort of the area around you is kind of lost to you. For you, everything's great, everything's magical. There's a little less trauma going on in the deer brain uh, than, than was previously noted, which going is going to take us to Spruce. You are not looking for any particular person, so what is it that you're doing right now? Uh, yeah, I think that Spruce is just like trying to make a toy. Um, he sat down on some sort of, I don't know what it is under the snow that's so lumpy, but like just sat here on it. Uh, with a little, a little candy cane and a little carving knife and a little block of wood, just trying to make a toy, man. Just, just hanging out, making a toy. Yeah, yeah. It's ignore that smell. It's fine. All right. Probably. So, as all of you are going about your various tasks, some time passes before all of you are enveloped in this warm peppermint-scented light. It, it's. I want to be very clear uh, for Frosty, for Fro- no, Frosty, for Jack Frost specifically. This isn't like unpleasant. You do not feel as if you are melting, but all of you feel this like growing warmth in your heart, as if you just had a cup of your favorite hot chocolate. Everything is peaceful and warm, and you all blink. And when you open your eyes, you find yourselves in this crystalline room, completely circular. You, as you each turn seeing one another, you also see your reflections 800 times due to the prisms of the crystal. There are three like very, very tall, what appear to be some kind of throne. Uh, Otherwise, you would describe it as a crystal easy chair that are posted at the top of this room. Enough that you could reach up and touch the top, like touch the top of the seat, but not enough that you can like easily climb up into it especially those of you who are of the shorter stature, uh, Paco Bell. <laughs> what the heck? Everything that has happened in your game of a quiet year has occurred. So those of you who have interacted before have interacted since. I don't think we knew Spruce or Hallie before. So no, you don't. Okay. Uh, uh, summon an ice knife in my hand just a Shard of ice just sh- 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 nothing safe in the Christmas prison yard. Um, yeah, Paco Bell pulls his candy cane rifle off the back of his off his back and just kind of loads it, and then kind of he looks at Hallie, goes, "I don't know you, but hi, hi, uh, guten talk. Who are you? What are you?" Hallie is jumping and leaping, watching the 800 reflections of her around the room and like rearing up at it and then kind of like bopping down onto her front. Like she is like gallivanting and so joyful at watching herself reflected gallivanting around. So when she's coming through and all of a sudden there's like the high, she freezes and turns. She's like, hi. Oh, this is normal behavior for a, a reindeer, I think, so it's fine. But, uh, Excuse me, hulking green person. What? What is this? Bro, like you, what? I mean, you're very large, but you look like Elfin, perhaps, but not Grimshlin. That's what he's trying to say. Some of some of that, but also maybe. Do you sparkle? What? I don't know, man. I've never even like thought to look. <clears throat> oh, you you sparkle. You're you, yeah, you sparkle. sparkle. <laughs> Thanks. How, why'd you bring us here? What are you even talking about? This place, all these mirrors, these crystal easy chairs, easy lazy boys. <laughs> Spruce like turns around and looks and like catches the reflection of his butt in the in the crystals and is like, "Yeah, dude, nice." You just grab like a crystal point and like yank back, and you find out that it like <laughs> lean back and kick up a little crystal footrest. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring you here, man. Well, I didn't do this. Did, did you do this, Jack? No. And then he, <laughs> he turns to the reindeer and goes, Nine. No, there's only one Ten. of them, dude. Ten. Oh, he, nice. Better joke. <laughs> Eleven, bro. That's as high as I think I can go, though. Twelve. Oh, shit, is that next? As this 
encounter is going on, you all feel a sort of somber feeling settle in a little bit. Uh, You sense in one of the chairs, a figure has appeared. They did not walk into the room, nor did they like float down from the ceiling. They are simply there now. They are a figure that seems a little hunched and wizened, but you can't see anything other than the enormous gray cloak that hides every single thing. It's hooded over their face, and all you can see are two sort of wizened gray hands folded neatly on their lap. Who brought you here, bro? The figure does not respond but it simply gestures to the two empty seats next to it. The chairs brought you here. It doesn't respond. It, it, it does not seem that this figure has... They haven't even given you an indication that they heard you. Yes, nailed it. Are their feet hanging off the edge of the chair too? Or are they like fully up in the chair? There is robe hanging down from the chair, but you're not, un- unless you're going to try and upskirt this this person, uh, you're not seeing any kind of feet or legs or any kind of situation. Pucklebell will walk a little bit closer and go, um, Pardon, can can you hear? And then, well, he's going to like kind of like poke maybe at where the legs should be with his rifle. You feel nothing there, but the figure slowly turns to you and does a very slow, singular nod. Are you over here? It gestures again to the two chairs beside it. As you turn to look, you see that two figures have appeared there as well. Again, you didn't hear them come in. They didn't walk in. They didn't float down. They are simply there now. One of the figures seems to be a younger man, probably in his late teens, early 20s, with a big red beard, wearing a, a entire, like, holly crown around his head. He's wearing these thick furs and, like, these luscious velvets. It's a very festive attire, and he looks very jovial. Another figure, sitting to his side, is the figure of a very young child, though you aren't able to tell whether it is a young girl, a young boy, anything. They simply give off this glowing appearance of youth. And when I say glowing, I mean it literally. This this person is more of a wisp with a face than it is an actual structured human form. You can tell, though, that humanoid is what they're going for. So Paco Bell's been around a while. He's been a Christmas elf for like 400 years. Could I maybe roll like a history check to... Um... Absolutely. I will allow you to roll whatever is higher, either history or religion. That's a full 11. Full 11. You are able to remember that these figures are supposed to be something you know. You remember hearing tales of something that vaguely matches this description, but you're not able to tell who they are, where they're from, what their deal is. For all you know, they're omens of death or omens of free candy. Either one. Mm. Oh, I do like candy. Ask him if they know where Frosty is or his hat. The figure that is more of a childlike wisp sort of turns. Forgive me, but we do not know <sighs> where he is at this time. You know of him? We do. We know of, well, a little bit of everything. I'll look back to Paco Bell and then look back to the figure and say, can you Tell me how to help him. That is, to some extent, why we are here. The figures all sort of turn and look at one another and share a single nod and turn back to you. We are the spirits of Christmas's past, present, and future. We are here because something has gone wrong that was not meant to. What? She kind of pauses. In her pause, the one in the center, the younger man, sort of goes up and is like, What she's trying to say, friends! We have some sort of abilities, you see. 
There were a series of events I'm sure you're all familiar that have happened over the past few months. There were deaths that were not of their time. There were terrible, terrible things. There were... He kind of like pauses, some of the color kind of drains from his face. There were murders. There were... There was war. There was discontent. And there was the loss of of the magic not just the magic that we ourselves utilize but the spirit of what brings this season into the hearts of man it's all gone that was never supposed to happen many of the things that occurred were not we believe there are darker forces at play here that led to these events Something beyond even our power. I look to Paco Bell again. Paco Bell um, kind of sheepishly takes the shell out of his rifle and puts it back on his back. <laughs> let, me, let me not shoot these guys. That is all true. I remember all of this, but uh, why the Dickens have you brought us here? The small figure speaks up again. We have a certain power. One that I believe the Dark Force did not anticipate. We are the spirits of Christmas's past, present, and yet to come. Meaning, we have some ability to control time. Oh, it's it's coming clear. You all have been selected. Many of the candidates have unfortunately fallen but we believe that the four of you have the potential to undo what must be undone so like you want us to pick them back up yeah I'm not sure how to respond to that I can pick up so many things I'm pretty strong like I can get most of them I think (gasps) we should work together to pick them back up heck yeah That strength will be an asset to you in this journey ahead. We cannot give you much time. Our power is not infinite. But each of us can bring you back. One month each. Meaning we can bring you three months into the past. To undo all of this. We can... Stop Frosty from losing his magic. We can stop... The father, Santa, from dying? We believe yes. And the wild hunt? There are some things that are written in fate. Some things cannot be entirely undone. However, there are some things that are not etched in stone. Some things that can even be wiped from a gravestone itself. It is what you choose to do with this time we have given you that will determine what is undone and what still comes to pass. Unfortunately, we do not know which is which of these things. But we believe that one more chance, one more chance could undo so much. Yeah, dude, like, it's kind of a bummer that everybody around here is so sad, so I... I'd like to help that. Do you all remember, friends, what happened three months ago? What started then? No. So much, so much has happened. There were many folks still alive. There were still battles, but many lives were lost between those three months. Do you all remember nothing? Well, there was, uh, Santa and in the wild hunt. Uh, we, we've been gone a, a while, so maybe we don't know all of the things. Is it when the other elves showed up? I believe so. Just before then. I don't know if I was even like fully formed yet, man. Your baby? Is, I mean, I maybe. Whoa. Maybe, baby. You're like the tallest baby I've ever seen. I've seen like two. 
That's a lot of babies, because I don't think I've seen, like, any. Can I roll a history? Please do. 13. So you remember two major things. One is that it was about three months ago that the Keebler elves began to arrive. But you also remember that this was when the Grinchlings were building. When Santa was killed, there was a flood of Grinchlings that sort of tried to completely overtake the town. Okay, so three months ago, we had the Keeplers coming into town, the big troublesome little bastards in their tree. And then um, that would line up timeline-wise with the, the Grimschlings. When that wave came, they needed. you said you're about three months old, so maybe they need about that much time to grow. Uh, Spruce is just like, he's crouched down now, and he's sitting there with his fingers out. One, two... I don't even think I am that old. Is three after two? Yeah. Yeah. Man. That's bonkers. All right. You got to 11 a minute ago. Anyway. I think we got 12 even. You you, you got to 12. It's not important. So, I mean, I'm in. Yeah. If we can save Frosty and maybe Santa and who, whoever else, this would be good. It's so better than where we're at now. Yeah. The three spirits look at one another, and two of them exchange looks. One of them probably exchanged a look. You can't really tell. <laughs> and there begin the room that you are in, the crystal begins to glow. In your reflection, you are able to see visions of moments that have passed in your lives in the past three months. You are able to see the horrors of war. You are able to see yourself falling out of some kind of birthing pod. You're able to see yourself frolicking happily. You're able to see all of the magic that has expelled just getting it sucked back in. Everything seems to be operating in reverse. You all feel like you're spinning. There is this moment of just dizzying light and color, and you all feel your feet kind of go out from under you. Allie's like doing that like weird cat on the ice thing. <laughs> and in a moment, just you all feel cold. And a little drowny because you are now all face down in about two or three feet of snow. The snow is falling. It appears to be a brisk morning. You all carry with you everything that you have known, everything that you have learned, everything that you have experienced. But as you look to the horizon, the darkness is not there. There is a bright sky ahead of you. And as you turn towards the town, Everything appears to be at peace. And there's that little tickle across the top of your skin that lets you know that there is not only magic about, but powerful and abundant magic. Dudes, what's on my skin? Pally elixir. Does it taste funny? It tastes like salt. Or does he taste funny? Funny how? Candy. Something. Do I taste like candy? And he licks himself. I I don't know. Do you? Your combination of three <laughs> weird animal critters. Are any of them candy flavored? I mean, I don't think I taste bad, but like, I don't think it's candy. And I've had a lot of candy. You'd be surprised how many things taste like candy around here. As you say that, you see uh, happily sliding down a little hill on their stomachs are a little pod of fairy penguins, uh, happily uh, cheatering their little penguin songs, waddling around, going down the hill on their little little fairy penguin tummies, uh, happily splashing into the water. That's just a thing that's well. nice that is happening over there. It's not <laughs> talking about things that I'm pretty sure taste like candy. Those things definitely taste. <laughs> hey, come on, let's go. And I do, I cast gust and I blow the snow off of me. Hallie was like 
like starting to go towards the penguins like she was going to go join this like frolicking party and then when you're like hey she just freezes and you're like let's go and she's just frozen there like one foot up ready to creep away looking at you like do we know where we are in the so world? So you are going to be outside of the town, uh, pat, like, dashward on the point of the snowflake. So you're kind of between... You're not near the Big Rock Candy Mountains, but you are going to be a little bit a ways that north. So we are outside of the force field? Yes. I thought if we could go look for Frosty, see if we can find him. Yeah, and I start moving that way. Wait, who's Frosty? Wait, wait! And she's like, <laughs> it's a snowman. After. <laughs> it's a famous snowman. You haven't heard of Frosty? Oh, the snow. Yeah, who hasn't? But like, maybe it's God, without the snowman, that's like everybody's name. It's like, what? What's your name, Jack? Like everybody? Oh, look over my shoulders. Shit. His name is Jack. My name is not Jack. My name is Johan. I just, I don't. I didn't heard that one. He's German. The cake? No. Well, yes, it's similar, but a uh, little different. I don't have coconut. Spruce is walking backwards, staring at the fairy penguins as they play while this is happening, and he's like, what's a coconut? It's a topping for cakes. It's a flavor of energy drink. <laughs> <sighs> God, do they just have a shitload of, like, energy drinks at the North Pole? I bet they do. I mean, given the manic crackhead energy that we've already, like, seen exhibited, probably, yeah. <laughs> they don't They don't drink water, it's just straight Red Bull. I'm just, I'm literally picturing Will Ferrell from, from Elf, just monster after monster. I'm horrified that that is apparently a voice and cadence you want me to deliver on a microphone directly into your ears. I didn't say that, but now that you have said that, I'm not going to unsay that. (laughs) So you all are going to walk around the perimeter of the force field. Again, your dashboard, so north. Where are you going? What are you looking for? I know you're looking for Frosty, but is there a particular place that he would go or something in your memories that calls to you on this? Again, you guys need to remember you're in more or less October. As we're walking, um, Paco Bell is just talking to, to Jack and kind of going, I don't I don't really remember what... Remember where Frosty was uh, three months ago? So Paco Bell, you're going to remember that when Frosty went missing, it was because he was battling a Yeti. There wasn't anything that, like, sort of spirited him away. While you can't exactly remember off-dome where he was, you know, where were you October, like, 3rd, 1995, you don't really remember that, but you do distinctly remember that he would often sort of patrol the perimeter outside of the force field uh, just as a way to protect... The town overall. Frosty is far more powerful than anyone sort of guesses he is. Well, not knowing his exact thereabouts, I say if we just kind of move Pranceford until we maybe find him, and then if we can circle back if we don't, we can go the other way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Check out here first, and then see if we can get in. So we just kind of start following the town perimeter. Maybe not in a snowflake shape, but like in a circle. Okay. So, Spruce, Hallie, what is what what is bringing you guys? Because Car- they immediately beeline to finding Frosty. What are you two doing? And don't just say following the vibes, because that's that's <laughs> already known. Uh, is So the force field is not up when we came from. The force field is present, but it is not in the, like, you know, insect zapper mode. Okay. But it is here now? It is visible when it becomes activated, is the word I will use. It is visibly different than how it looks now. Now it looks almost like a sheen of suspended water that doesn't flow but sits static around, when it becomes uh, Grinchling Zapper mode, that's it's going to become much sharper and harder. Okay. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I think just, like, 
being able to see as little as he can of what's through the force field is definitely pulling Spruce forward. Because he's like, this looks so different. Where's all the mounds? Well, do you want to tell him? I don't want to tell him. They'll be, they'll, they're not going to be there now. Oh, that was, all right. That was BS. Right. So did you say that was nice. BS? It was BS that the mounds are gone? No, it's before Spruce. <sighs> okay. <laughs> we all were like, fucking bullshit, I guess. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah, but we all were like, where are my, where are my clearly corpse uh, love seats? <laughs> so is Spruce trying to head into town? He's heading toward town, definitely. If nobody stops him, he's going for that. Do, you, do we want to keep him with us, or? Hey, you can you can go with him if you want. I'm gonna check no, around I, out I, here first. Looking for Frosty, but uh, I don't know if we should keep an eye on him. He might be apprehended. He, he's obviously not an elf. Spruce. <laughs> yeah, dude. Perhaps you should stick with us for a while. Okay, but like just just until we you know have a look around. Oh yeah, so like maybe later we go into town, search for the source of the mounds. Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) We'll look outside first, and then we'll go inside. Nice. I'll buy you hot chocolate. Okay. I definitely want to go inside. Oh, my man. That's what I thought. Uh, reindeer. What was your name? Mm, Me. What? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. What was Hallie? Hallie. What? That's right. Uh, do you want um, do you want some sugar cubes later? I'll take them now. I don't have any now, but if you come with us, we'll get some on the way. Oh, I got, yeah. I got one. Oh, I'll take it. Here you go. Uh, as you begin to uh, offer this uh, sugar cube, to, I don't, I don't know that deer do the lip thing that horses do. That's distressing <laughs> and weird, uh, but. Whatever the equivalent of that occurs, when you all feel a rumbling and hear the sound of immense chunks of snow being shifted and disturbed. Does that does that feel like my buddy Frosty? Well, it would if it didn't feel like it was actively hostile. Ooh, hostile Frosty. A hosty, if you will. As you all as you all look comet word, you see Pulling itself out of the snow and ice is an enormous creature made of snow and ice. Its two crystalline eyes sort of turn to you and you hear muffled by all of the snow yet somehow produced by it, this roar. All of you remember, one of the reasons why the force field's always up even when it's not active there be monsters up in Demdare Hills, and you guys have just found an ice element. Roll for initiative. Uh-oh. 